What's going on guys? Welcome back to Weekly GCAP, the only source you'll ever need to catch up on all the gaming news from the last week. As always, we got quite a couple stories to go through, so let's go ahead and get right into this. First things first, the Sandland demo is available now. In the description, it says, experience exciting vehicle action and exploration through a partial area of the Sandland map in this explosive demo. The playable contents include exploration of a limited portion of the Sandland map, limited Beelzebub, Rao and Thief playable character action, limited battle tank, battle armor, and motorbike vehicle action. Play the demo and receive bonuses in the full game. The Bonus items will be unlocked in the full game by playing the demo. These can be used to enhance vehicles in Spino, those including the thir uh, 30 B grade steel and 30 B grade bolt. In this action RPG, you will become the main character as Beezlebub. Lead your company of heroic misfits and explore the legendary world of Sandland developed by the creator of Dragon Ball and Dr. Slump, Akira Toriyama. End quote. Pre orders are available now, and the full game will be releasing April 26, 2024. It will be coming out for the Xbox Series X and S, PS4, PS5, and PC. This game is, of course, based on the Sandland manga created by Akira. Toriyama. To say that that is still a fresh wound would be quite the understatement, obviously. Rest in peace, Akira Toriyama, and I cannot wait to experience the manga that he created in video game form. Next up, Hi-Fi Rush is available on PlayStation 5 now. If you go over to Metacritic, this version is currently sitting at a 91, which if you compare that to the Xbox version, that's interesting because the Xbox version came in at an 87. Maybe it's because it got less reviews overall, but I just found that interesting. Anyway, this released on March 19th. Well, the PlayStation 5 version specifically <laughs> released on March 19th. This is like an action rhythm game. It's honestly a lot of fun. I played it back when it first came out. I will be picking up a physical copy over on PlayStation just because I love this game so much and I, I'm genuinely willing to sit down and play through it again. Next up, Dragon's Dogma 2 released and the reviews went live. Right now it is sitting at an 87 on the PS5 on Metacritic and 86 on Xbox and 90 on PC. So... Uh, something tells me this is probably going to be a game of the year contender. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this, the game isn't out yet, but obviously I'll be playing it as soon as it drops, and man, I'm so excited. Next up, Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra was announced. The description reads, quote, Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. In the chaos of war, worlds collide. Skydance New Media and Marvel Games share an original story where an ensemble of four heroes must overcome their differences and form an uneasy alliance to confront their common enemy. Get your first look at the game shown off at State of Unreal 2024, and obviously, you're seeing the trailer on your screen. Like, this looks absolutely absolutely insane and the game you get to play is like Captain America and Black Panther. Unfortunately, there is no release date yet, but man, to say that I'm excited for this game would be beyond an understatement. And furthermore, you know, I'm not much of a graphics guy, but like, can we just take a minute to appreciate these graphics? Like, oh my gosh, if this is like what the actual in-engine game looks like, I, I, that, that's just, that's insane. Next up, Alpha Protocol has finally made a comeback on PC. Right now, it is available on GOG for $19.99, but actually, if you catch it quick enough, it is on sale for $17.99 at the moment. This game was developed by Obsidian. Obsidian, yes, the same Obsidian that brought us amazing games such as Fallout New Vegas and Knights of the Old Republic 2. I highly recommend giving this one a shot. This is from the PS3 slash 360 era, and unfortunately, kind of flew below the radar. It's a bit of a hidden gem. I sell my PS3 copy to this day, and man, I absolutely adore this game, and I can highly recommend it. Next up, we got some new Dragon Ball Sparking Zero gameplay. They had a showcase. It was like 12 minutes and 47 seconds long, and man, this is essentially just like a modern-day Budokai Tenkaichi between the insane roster count when it comes to like how many characters is going to be in the game, the gameplay itself, and I mean, just look at the graphics, man. Like, you know, I, I always love the art style that they do in, like, the Dragon Ball games where, you know, they adapt the anime style to video game by doing, like, a borderlands s like, cell-shaded look. Showed off some awesome gameplay, like Vegeta and Goku going at it. Yeah, man, <laughs> like, my money is all over this one. Unfortunately, we still don't have an official release date, but it was confirmed that this will be coming to PS5, Series X, and S, and PC. There's so many cool little features they shut off during this, too, where, like, even, like, your player's character's, like, clothes will start to kind of get, like, torn during the battle, and you can do, like, like, transformations mid-battle. I'm just waiting for somebody to make, like, a fan film, like, recreating, like, the whole entire, like, <laughs> if you know anything about Dragon Ball Z, right? Like, the whole fight between, like, Frieza and Goku, how it's literally, like, just when you cut up the fight itself, it's, like, multiple hours long. I can't wait to see somebody, like, recreate that as, like, a fan film and even include, like, all the transformations mid-game. That would be sick. Next up, Monopoly Go has made $2 billion in less than a year. This coming from GamesIndustry.biz. Quote, Monopoly Go reaches $2 billion in consumer spending. The mobile board title hits the revenue milestone in 10 months after launching. They also have the original source links where they also mention that quote, that exciting moment came just 10 months since launch and only three months after reaching $1 billion. So that basically means that since launch, it took them seven months to hit 1 billion, which is a very respectable figure. But then beyond that, it only took another three months to hit 2 billion. So, so it's only accelerating. You know, I feel like all of us in the console and PC space are like, you know, the ones that primary, primarily play games there are kind of just like focus on that side of the news. We don't really see or realize why these companies are pushing so hard for live service games. And I mean, like we always know, like, like you know, it's all about money, right? But 
and, you know, when you see figures like this, like, yes, it does start to make sense. Does it make it right? Am I defending them? Of course not, but I'm just saying, like, yeah, it's no wonder you got people like EA and Ubisoft throwing all their money at this live service garbage. Next up, Embracer has confirmed the sale of Saber Interactive. Let's get let's get a round of applause. At least one of these studios survived. I mean, I'm not trying to make a joke of this, but like seriously, everybody that was bought up by Embracer, I mean, like all those studios are closing down or getting broken off or employees are just straight out being fired. Anyway, this is coming from Video Games Chronicle. Quote, Embracer has officially sold off Saber Interactive, the, a group which is home to studios 3D Realms, Slipgate, Ironworks, and more for $247 million. In an announcement to investors on Thursday, Embracer said the sale meant it would now cease all operations in Russia while improving its cash flow. Saber is being sold to a group of private investors under Beacon Interactive, a company controlled by Saber Interactive co-founder Matthew Karch. So in other words, they're basically going independent, similar to what we saw with like Toys for Bob a little while ago, except on a bigger scale, because Saber Interactive is a pretty sizable studio. Uh, but anyway, according to B, uh, according to Bloomberg, Beacon intends to exercise an option to acquire 4A Games, uh, which are the developers of the Metro series, and Zen Studios, which, you know, make like pinball games. Uh, uh, which would see the total value of the deal rise to about $500 million. Uh, Saber will keep studios Nimble Giant, which made Star Trek Infinite, 3D Realms, which made Ion Fury, Sandbox Strategies, New World Interactive, which made Insurgency, Slipgate Ironworks, which made Graven, Madhead Games, which made Scars Above, Fractured Bite, which made Borderlands Legendary Collection, and Digic. Embracer will retain Tripwire, who made Tribalry, uh, Chivalry, uh, Beamdog, who made Myth Force, Tuxedo Labs, who made Teardown, Demiurge, Shiver, who made Lucius, Aspire, who made the Star Wars battle from classic collection that that's a topic for another day uh, snapshot games who made phoenix point and 34 big things uh who made red out Saber's buyer has also been granted an option right to acquire 4A Games and Zen Studios for a fixed price within a certain time period. Long-term licensing and publishing rights to all current and future PC slash console games in the Metro franchise are held within the Embracer's uh, Play On group. These rights will not change regardless of whether the option rights are exercised. It's said, again, Metro is developed by 4A, and unfortunately, Embracer still holds some of the uh, licensing and publishing rights there, so I don't know how I feel about that. I just, I don't like things being owned by Embracer, period, at this point. But again, round of applause to Saber Interactive for, you know, breaking free and getting away from the whole Embracer circle there, and apparently they're going to be able to work on the uh, whole KOTOR remake, which was originally going to be wor uh, worked on by Aspire, but seeing how the Battlefront Classic Collection turned out, that's probably for the better that they ended up not working on that. But with it in the hands of Saber Interactive, I, yeah, my, my hopes are high for this one. So we'll see what comes of it, but yeah, pretty excited. And again, awesome stuff. Congratulations to Saber for breaking free. Next up, Connie Booth is joining EA. This is coming from IGN. Quote, former PlayStation executive Connie Booth, one of the ch uh, chief architects of PlayStation's first party strategy before her unexpected departure in 2023, is joining EA to help lead its studios amid its ongoing restructure. It also notes that veteran executive spent more than 30 years at Sony before her departure in 2023, which means she was there since even before for the PS1. Booth's title will be Group General Manager, Action RPG with a portfolio that will include EA Motive, uh, work, who is working on Iron Man, Cliffhanger, who is working on Black Panther, and Bioware, who is working on Dragon Age, a Dragon Age and Mass Effect. She will report directly to EA Entertainment head Laura Miel. So, I mean, awesome for Connie Booth. Uh, I remember we actually covered that story when it first happened. I was like, what's going on here? Like, Connie Booth leaving PlayStation? Like, you know, again, she was there since, like, even before the PS1, but it seems like a new opportunity opened up over to EA. A pretty big opportunity at that. Again, group general manager for a lot of these different games. Really interested to see if this will impact the development of Dragon Age or Mass Effect by any chance, because those are two games that I'm very excited for, as well as Iron Man. I mean, all these games, really. I mean, but it's just a matter of the fact that, you know, it's been a while since Mass Effect 3, and, you know, I mean, Mass Effect Andromeda, sure. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, as much as I actually do like Andromeda, and I don't think it got, I, I don't, but I don't think that it actually deserved to get all the hate that it did get. I am genuinely looking forward to Mass Effect 4 or the Mass Effect reboot or whatever it is that they're actually working on right now. So I just, you know, if, if this can help speed up that process, then that's good with me because I just really want to see what's coming out there. But also in Dragon Age, it's been a while since Inquisition. So all in all, congratulations to Connie Booth and I hope everything works out for you there. Next up, the NES has gotten an insane upgrade after three decades. This is coming from Time to Retro on X. Quote, I'm very excited to announce that what I've been working on in the background for quite some time. Then I'll, I'll put the pictures up on screen for you guys so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about as we go. So here we have the NES Hub, a product to utilize the potential of the commercially unused 
latest NES expansion port. Uh, based on a new connector designed to fit perfectly into the expansion port, the features include no solder, it's plug and play, or player wireless, wired works simultaneously, SNES controller support through inexpensive add-on, Famicom peripheral support, expansion audio, and it's open for third-party add-ons. And then at the, uh, there's, it's like a string of tweets, and then at the bottom it just says, please let me know what you think. I'm also looking for one or two more beta testers right now, as I only tried it on my pal NES so far. Leave a comment if you'd like to test it, end quote. So if you would like to test this out, then just go over to, again, at Time2Retro on X. I'll put the text up on the screen as well, so you guys can kind of, like, see what the username is supposed to be. But go over there, leave a comment on the thing. That's only if you're willing to, like, you know, help out with, like, extensive testing and stuff like that. But... Again, like, you know, this is just so cool, especially that last picture where it was, like, the DualShock working on the NES, like, that's just mind-blowing to me. I'll definitely be keeping my eye on this one, and whenever it's, like, officially available or if it ends up getting, like, a commercial uh, release of some kind, I would like to pick it up. Next up, two games are free on Epic Games, those being Call of the Wild, The Angler, and Invincible Presents Adam Eve. These are free until March 28th at 11 a.m. EST, and you might as well redeem them, because, I mean, there's no better price than free. Next up, we got the second wave of March Xbox Game Pass games for you guys. The following games games are available now. Those being Light Your Frontier, which is a game preview for Cloud PC and Xbox Series X and S. This was a day one release for Game Pass. MLB The Show 24 for Cloud and Console, which was also a day one release. The Quarry for Cloud and Console. Evil West for Cloud, Console, and PC. Terra Invicta, which is a game preview coming to PC on March 26th. Diablo 4 coming to Console and PC on March 28th. Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbo Charge coming to Cloud, Console, and PC on March 28th. Open Roads for Cloud, Console, and PC on March 28th, which is a day one release as well. Ark Survival Ascended coming to Cloud PC, Xbox Series X and S coming April 1st. F123, the Cloud version coming to EA Play April 2nd. And then Super Hot, Mind Control Delete coming to Cloud Console and PC April 2nd. And the games leaving March 31st are Hot Wheels Unleashed for Cloud Console and PC, Infinite Guitars for Cloud Console and PC, and then will be the show 23 for Cloud and Console. So make sure you play those if you've been wanting to, because you only got a little bit more to do so. And finally, Ubisoft is using AI to create NPC dialogue. I let's just get into this. This is coming from Ubisoft on X. Quote, ever dreamed of having a real conversation with an NPC? Presenting our research project NEO NPCs, or NEO NPCs, sorry. A new kind of NPC that uses generative AI to really talk to you. Discover how our team of writers and developers are coming together in this exciting experiment, and then they have an image linked with, oh gosh, just some of the worst inhuman dialogue you've ever heard that this AI created. Here it is. It goes, hi, you must be Mel Nelson. I can't believe you're finally here. I'm Bloom, your future teammate in the Resistance by by the way, I figured out we could spend some time together to check if we have a compatible vibe, you know, to build our dynamic duo. How does that sound to you? Oh my god, just make it stop. I've said it once, I've said it twice, and I'm just gonna say this really fast. Video games are art. Art cannot be created by a machine. Art is art because humans create it. The human element is what makes art what it is. AI should not have any place in video game development unless it's something very, you know, on like a fundamental level of like, I don't know, maybe like helping create code or something on the back end. Like to help alleviate stress on the back end, AI should never be playing into like what the player is actually seeing or like interacting with in this way at least if you want to have a game all about like talking to an ai as an innovative concept maybe but when it gets to this point where they're like kind of trying to replace the jobs that humans would otherwise have with like actually writing this dialogue in, in this way yeah, no, this just, no. There's a difference between innovation and laziness, or creating tools to enhance laziness, and this is most certainly the latter. Well, I shouldn't say laziness, I should instead say, you know, uh, getting rid of workers so they can increase their profits. Screw AI, screw Ubisoft, I miss when video games were made by humans. But anyway, that is all the stories that I got for you guys this week, so now I'd definitely love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on everything that we talked about? Whether it's that crazy upgrade to the NES, or Ubisoft using AI to make NPC to, oh gosh, anyway, or just, you know, any of the new games coming out, obviously. Obviously, by the day that this is going up, we got like Rise of the Ronin, Princess Peach Showtime, and Dragon's Dogma 2. So, which one are you diving into? Are you diving into all three? Because you know, I, I, you, I'm the type of guy, I go one game at a time, but I will be getting to all three of these. Whatever it is, whatever thing, and I would definitely love to hear from you guys. But anyway, this is Weekly GCAP. No episodes go live every single Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern, so if you to catch them as soon as they go live, well, then I know when to be here. But anyways, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day and an amazing weekend. Stay beautiful. I love you all. Peace.